So it's 2003, while I'm a third grader, when I end up befriending this well-spoken chubby kid from my class. We would walk together going home after sporting afternoons. With time, I got to find out my new friend's dad was a medical doctor. And in no time, I started idolizing that dad as a real life superhero. That would be the beginning of my lifelong passion to save lives. 18 years later, I'm a health worker at Livingston Central Teaching Hospital, but I don't feel like a hero myself. Although I love my job, I'm mostly fatigued running on coffee, and my daily morale is threatened by patients dying. Back in 2018, one of my closest cousins got married, and it wasn't long after that she became pregnant. As a first-time pregnant woman, she had a lot of anxiety around her pregnancy and the overall health of her baby. Being self-employed and running her own retail shop, a day away from the shop meant fewer sales, translating to less income. This, on its own, is a threat to her livelihood and that of her family. In the bid to understand the challenges my cousin was going through, I came together with three colleagues who would eventually become my co-founders. Our research led us to very shocking findings. The health of women, mothers and children is fundamental to development, as outlined by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals number 3 and number 10. However, about 810 mothers die daily from preventable pregnancy and childbirth-related complications. A majority of families in the low- and middle-income countries live hand-to-mouth and cannot afford the luxury of health insurance. It is an absolute tragedy that when women get pregnant, they're forced to choose between providing for their families over the crucial maternal care. Take patient C for an example. One of the pregnant women who came in at the hospital in October 2021 with an inevitable miscarriage. Clinically, an inevitable miscarriage is when the miscarriage process in a pregnancy has progressed to a state where intervention is not possible. There was little to nothing we could do for patient C to save a 15-week-old pregnancy. The only option we had left was to terminate the pregnancy and induce labor to prevent further complications like maternal infection. It's saddening to say, over 70% of women in Zambia do not have access to good quality maternal health, and it's totally unacceptable that about eight die daily from preventable pregnancy and childbirth-related complications. What's unfortunate about the poor access to healthcare for patient C, my cousin, and other women in their situation is that the patients mostly affected are from marginalized communities and rural communities. In addition, there are several factors that have been creating barriers to quality health access. These include incapacitated health facilities, local belief systems, the socioeconomic statuses of the communities, among others. These unsettling factors eventually led my colleagues and I to starting Dawa Health, which is a digital health platform that's democratizing access to maternal care. At Dawa Health, we provide training and pregnancy kit to a community healthcare worker that they use to onboard patients in communities. This kit enables the community healthcare worker to provide point of care support and screening for conditions like pregnancy induced diabetes and uh, high blood pressure, anemia in pregnancy, urinary tract infections, and pre existing conditions. This point of care support means support right there in the community without the mother coming into the health facility. The community healthcare worker then follows up on the patient after every two weeks to make sure both the baby and the mother are safe. All identified high-risk patients are then referred to their local health facilities for continued support. In addition to the community healthcare worker, a mother with a mobile device is able to get weekly tailored maternal health support through the platform. Our platform is now available in over six local languages. Let me give you uh, Mrs. Zat as an example. Mrs. Zat is a beneficiary of the platform. Before joining the platform, Mrs. Zat didn't know the importance of antenatal screening and uh, iris condition screening in pregnancy. Through the platform, we were able to provide Mrs. Zat with adequate antenatal support and also helped her deliver a baby healthy girl. Through the Dawa Health platform, we've supported over 4,000 women 
from late 2019 to mid 2021. We anticipate to support a further 10,000 mothers by end of 2022 with a moonshot goal of reaching a million mothers in the next five years. In 2020, the platform was selected as the best innovation under BoostUp, a Southern Africa regional competition. This enabled us to form further partnerships with partners like UNDP Accelerator Labs and UNFPA. This year in 2021, the platform will be showcasing at Slash in Helsinki, Finland, one of the largest tech events in the world where innovators, policymakers, and investors network. When it comes to maternal health, providing early support to women has been proven to reduce maternal mortality by over 75%. Early disease screening and point-of-care support reduce out-of-the-pocket expenditure for women and facilitate early intervention by health workers. However, as beneficiaries of the healthcare system, whether in government, as policymakers or innovators, we need to create conducive and sustainable ecosystems that promotes commercialization of innovations. With the power of technology, we can effectively decongest our health centers and hospitals, creating room for critical patients to get timely and quality uh, care. This means all low-risk patients can effectively get remote support without the need of being at the health center. What excites me the most is that it's not only here in Zambia where healthcare solutions are addressing critical health challenges. In the last decade or so, Brilliant healthcare services and products have been sprouting across the low and middle income countries. Innovators with solutions addressing critical health challenges like communicable and non-communicable diseases to streamlining healthcare solutions. These are brilliant healthcare solutions that innovators are creating to address and strengthen their communities. I have a powerful conviction that technology and innovation will be instrumental in solving most of the healthcare challenges we have in the low and middle income countries. With the right support, education and funding, solutions in the low and middle income countries can easily scale as they are built with local insights. These local insights take into consideration the uniqueness of our ecosystems. That's creating effective solutions to our problems. Whether young, educated or rich, we are all affected by an inefficient healthcare system. Times will come when we need to start our families, support sick relatives, or just get quick doctor consultations because we have other business to attend to. That's when we'll feel the inefficiency of our healthcare system. With a platform we've been building like Dawa Health that promotes maternal access, I believe it's just the tip of the iceberg of possibilities created by technology and innovation. As a leader of the fourth industrial revolution in Africa, I'm playing my part. Whether in government, private sector, or non-governmental organization, we all need to play our part. We need to innovate and leverage on technology to create solutions that are effective and strengthen our communities. Thank you.